If I got sick, would it be better to be a human or a pet? I'm Billy Poynton, and in this edition of At Seven, we visit a specialist veterinary practice. It literally operates at the forefront of medical technology and tries to improve and extend the lives of our much loved pets. We're a specialist tertiary referral centre, a really bit like an Adam Brooks for dogs and cats. Um, so your veterinary surgeon would be like uh, a general practitioner and they refer cases on to us if they are either not sure what is wrong or the patients need specialist attention and care and diagnostic facilities that we can provide. We only here look after dogs and cats. Um, the profession is changing quickly, so dog and cat specialty is, is one area. Um, small animals, the rabbits and guinea pigs is another specialty. Animals are referred here in two main ways. We see a lot of elective planned referral patients where the veterinary surgeon will book an appointment for us at some point within the next one to two weeks. Uh, very much like your GP sending you to Adam Brooks or your local general hospital. However, about 30% of our patients come as emergencies, so either the same day or within a few hours of the vets um, asking us to see them. And many of these patients are seriously critically ill. Does she try to jump when she's in the house? Or she not she does house? try to, she has been trying to, not so much okay. the last couple of days. So that will be the first step, okay? Do some bloods, make sure she's fit and to have to be anesthetized. One of our anesthetists will also have a consult with her. Uh, one example of a patient that uh, we're coming here has uh, benefited the patient immensely was a lovely dog called Alfie who we saw recently. Uh, he needed uh, emergency thoracic surgery so he had to open his chest cavity to remove a large area of infection. Now unfortunately what happened to him was that he actually experienced a cardiac arrest whilst on the table um, and you, our surgeons started to massage the heart to actually physically pump the heart to keep the blood running and then the anaesthesia team and the internal medicine team all happened to be on site. They were able to um, jump straight in and we were able to resuscitate him, return his heart to normal function using a defibrillator like you'll see on ER or casualty. Um, and if it hadn't been for the fact that we have the facilities and we have the team on site at the time of having a surgery, he would not be alive today. I'm very pleased to say he's currently running around and doing really, really well. Veterinary bills are rising across the UK, that is true. I'd hope one thing we try to do is offer extremely good value for money. Uh, around about 85 to 88 percent of our patients here are insured. Most of the clients we have uh, will be able to, if they're not insured, they are able to pay for their care and the, um, at the time of discharge. However, there are some patients who obviously cannot be paid for and the clients really struggle. What we therefore do is we work with two credit finance companies to try to spread the cost of the, uh, that they've incurred over a 12-month period, just to try to make what we offer here available to as many people as possible. So Sausage is here today for a physiotherapy session. Um, Sausage had a back problem back in April and she came in for an operation where she had a disc extrusion. Um, so that meant she was off her back legs. Good girl. We try to keep the practice at the leading edge, or we do keep the practice at the leading edge by in a variety of ways. So we do have a lot of scientific research. So we have clinical trials underway. Uh, we published 15 scientific papers in the last 12 months and over 20 abstracts at research conferences. Keeping at the forefront of technological change in the profession is challenging because the capital investment needed to do so is actually extremely large. Uh, MRI technology, CT technology is changing all the time, but we constantly invest and we are in the process now investing in new MRI, new CT and further uh, equipment in our oncology service in particular. So it's one of the reasons why veterinary care is becoming more expensive, because if we want to offer all these facilities then we need to be at the cutting edge to make sure that the care we offer is truly the best there can be. Right. But by Ready? seeing a large number of clients we're able to spread that cost to over to make it as fair as possible. Economics, advanced research and genuine care go hand in hand to provide cutting edge welfare for dogs and cats, while at the same time proving concepts used in human medicine as well. Now tell us what you think, and thanks for watching this edition of At7.